these days, there are many different ways to analyze a neuroimaging data set, and the options can feel overwhelming. To make matters even more complicated, you've probably run into compatibility issues with software versions, with programming languages and operating systems. You can solve a lot of these problems using something called NeuroDesk. NeuroDesk is an imaging suite that contains nearly any kind of software package that you would want to use. It's also self-contained, meaning it doesn't depend on or interfere with any programs you have installed on your local machine. And this makes it ideal for reproducible science, meaning you can customize your environment to match somebody else's, no matter what kind of computer you have. Let's take a look at the NeuroDesk website, which can be found at neurodesk.org. They have many useful tutorials and guides, which I encourage you to read. For now though, we will download the NeuroDesk app. In my case, I'm using a Macintosh computer with a Silicon ARM processor. Click on that link and notice that the installation requires Docker, so I click on the link right here. However, as of October 2024, Docker versions 4.33 and above don't seem to work with Macs. Click on the checksum release notes and scroll down until you find version 4.32.0, which will be available until roughly January 2025. Click on the link appropriate to your machine, download it, and then install it. Once you've installed Docker, make sure it's running by searching for it with your finder, opening it, and then you should see something like this. Now we will download NeuroDesk app. In my case, I will install the Mac OS Apple Silicon installer, which you can find in this link right here. Click on the link appropriate to your machine, which in my case is Mac OS Apple Silicon installer. Wait for it to download, and then just like with Docker, open it up and make sure it's running. When you open NeuroDesk app, you'll see an option to open local NeuroDesk. Select that option and then notice how it's being run on your local machine with Docker. This can take some time for the first setup, so we're going to fade out and come back when it's finished. Once NeuroDesk is running, you will see a new launcher window. This shows you different options for how to use NeuroDesk. For example, you could open a terminal just like you would with a Macintosh or Linux operating system. Or if we go back to File, New Launcher, you could open up a Jupyter Notebook by clicking on any of these Python kernels. Notice that all of the items in the left panel display folders you can navigate to and different files that you can open. If you click on the Neuro Desktop Launcher icon right here, it will open a new window giving you a couple of different options. I suggest using the desktop dynamic resolution option since this can be resized to whatever dimensions you prefer. This opens a new virtual desktop which you can use to pre-process and visualize data as though it were on your local machine. To test whether the libraries work, open a terminal by clicking the icon in the bottom tray of the new window. Then in the terminal that opens, type ML for module load, AFNI, and then type something like 3D info, one of the most common commands in the AFNI library. And you should see by default the help file for it, indicating that the libraries are loaded and you can use these commands. Now that you've seen the basics of how NeuroDesk works, you probably want to sample the other options as well. There are many libraries available which almost exhaustively cover the range of imaging analysis software that is available. You can see the full suite by clicking on the icon at the extreme lower left of the virtual desktop and then selecting NeuroDesk and All Applications. Take a look at what's available. From FSL to FreeSurfer to MRIQC, RStudio, Slicer, and much more. From this menu, you could also load a module instead of doing it from the command line like I showed previously. 
For example, we could open FSL version 6.0.7.1, which opens up a new terminal in which you have access to all of the commands in the FSL library. For example, we could open up the typical FSL graphical user interface, which gives you access to things like feet, and you also have access to the command line commands, such as BET, the brain extraction tool. Before leaving you to explore on your own, notice that if you open a new terminal and type ls within your home directory, there is a folder called neurodesktop-storage. This is the portal between your local machine and Neurodesk. Assuming you use the defaults when installing Neurodesk app, there should also be a folder on your local machine in your home directory with the same name of Neuro Desktop Storage. Anything placed in that folder on your local machine will be accessible in the virtual desktop and vice versa. For example, if we go to a website like openneuro.org and select the Flanker dataset, which I've used many times before, if you download a sample image, such as this subject's T1 weighted anatomical image, you can place it from your downloads folder into the Neuro Desktop Storage folder from your local machine. If we then go back to Neurodesk and we look within one of the terminals that's already opened, from your home directory, you can type ls Neuro Desktop Storage and then move that file into your home directory or whatever directory that you want. In this case, I'll use my terminal with FSL to perform a simple skull stripping using FSL's BET tool, which only requires an input and an output file name. Once it finishes, I can then move the finished product into Neuro Desktop Storage and from my local machine, drag and drop that file onto my desktop. I can then look at it with something like the AFNI graphical user interface or whatever I want. I should also point out, there are other methods to transfer files between your local machine and Neurodesk, such as dragging and dropping. You can see more details about this on the Neurodesk website. I'll be using Neurodesk for my upcoming tutorials, especially those on Python, so I recommend downloading it to follow along. I think it's a great resource for both newcomers and veterans, and I hope it leads to scientific practices that are more efficient, more transparent, and more reproducible.